Today's video really shows us that you gotta know when to use your words, you gotta know when to use the hot sauce, and you gotta know when it's time for the gun. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Los Angeles, California. These people are loitering and hanging out in an area at a church in Los Angeles. It's a high crime area. They have security and the security guard's gonna come up and say, hey guys, you gotta go. You can't hang out here, whatever. Um, it's a high drug use area. They have a lot of drug deals that go on there. So the security's there to kind of, hey guys, you can't hang out here, whatever. And the guy's like, no, nah, I'm not leaving. So the security guard's gonna continue to tell him, man, you gotta go, you gotta get the heck out of here. And watch the guy who's leaning against the building. He's like, I'm not going, man. I'm not going without a fight. You're not getting me out of here without a fight is literally what he said according to the guard that sent it to me who's the one standing on the right. So the guy goes, nah, man, you gotta go. And when the guy starts to approach him because he said he wanted to fight him, he sprayed him down with the hot sauce. And watch that walk the guy off pretty significantly. And now watch what happens here. You're gonna see him kind of hose that a little bit. And now he's actually gonna draw his firearm. And we're gonna get to see why because we have a second perspective. So watch what happens when he you know, blesses him with the hot sauce that gets the guy to drop all of his stuff, whatever. He draws an eight inch knife and you see him unsheath that knife. And when he does, the guard draws his firearm and says, hey man, you wanna back off of me and get the heck away from me. And, and then that guy's, I don't know if it's his girlfriend, his friend, whatever, is able to keep him away. Hey man, get the heck away, whatever. Now watch the guy at the bottom of the screen. He's not really, you know, offended by the gun. He's like, whatever, man, you gotta let me hear or whatever. So, so the guard that's got the gun out actually tells the guard that's just dropped back behind to, to tase him if he keeps coming any closer. So he decides he is going to head off as well. And so no shots are fired in this particular one. They let that girl come and get her stuff, tell them to take off. And as far as I know, didn't even call the cops on this one. Just got those guys out of there. They got blessed with the hot sauce and the guards went on to continue their work day. Ooh, we're gonna think about some lessons out of this one. If you're a firearms instructor and you wanna get better as an instructor, consider putting an application in for our Active Self-Protection Instructor Certification Program. It's not about learning how to shoot better. We already assume you know how to shoot. In fact, it's about teaching you to be the best teacher of people that you can be and the best firearms instructor that you can in helping your students. Hit the link in the description to find out more. So many lessons for us to think about here. And of course, you know, the, again, these guys are, are, are trespassing, they're not allowed to hang out there, it's a high crime area, high drug use area, and, and enough that this church has security, okay? Uh, and I know some folks are gonna wonder, wait a minute, it's a church, shouldn't they be able to be there, whatever? But we don't know all the situations surrounding that, okay? And, and knowing that it's a high crime area, church has had a lot of property crime in the area, knowing that it's, it's a lot of drug activity in the area, and they, again, they have security on campus, in order to maintain the physical security uh, of the campus. So it's okay for him to say, hey man, this is private property, you gotta go, okay? So it's not a public space, it's the, the privately owned property of the church and the people who own the church, all right? Next thing I really wanna think about here is verbal judo. We talk about having verbal judo skills and being able to talk to people in such a way that you can get done what you need to get done without ending up in physical violence. And so we do that as best we can by establishing contact and then building rapport and then influencing behavior and achieving the objectives that we want to. And we do that by, hey man, tell me what your name is. I don't wanna get in a fight with you. We're cool, man. But notice here what this guy's doing. You can see his body language. Look at the person's body language. He's got those hands out at his waist, neck forward and all that. That's aggressive posture. And he literally just told this guy, hey, I am not leaving without a fight. As he said, I'm not going anywhere without a fight. So if you can slow your roll, right? So if at all possible, back down, all right, man, listen, I don't wanna have a fight with you or whatever, but tell me what your name is, talk to me, why is this such an important thing, whatever, if at all possible, you maintain your discretionary time by maintaining space. But I also want you to notice that our, uh, our guard here has other options available to him if the guy decides to make a move his way. So the, the bad guy gets to, to see this as well. Couple things, I want you to notice that our, our guard starts thinking about his firearm here, but I would say in this moment, a firearm is a poor choice, which is why I'm glad he didn't actually draw the firearm, because I don't see a deadly threat here. I see a physical threat brewing as the guy said, oh yeah, well, you know, I'll kick all your butts or whatever, I wanna fight you. But also the second part, which is just as important, is that our guard actually already has his OC spray staged in his hand. And staging an OC spray is not brandishing that. You notice that he's got his hand down. He's actually hiding that OC spray. And I think that's a great tactic. I don't threaten people with OC spray. I don't tell people, hey, if you don't do what I say, I'm gonna spray you. I leave that there and go, hey man, I don't wanna fight you and use the OC spray as a long range surprise eye poke if I need it. And that's exactly what he did here and I think that's really good. Now, notice here he just comes up and again, no warning, gives the guy the hot sauce from the distance that he could. 
Now, I will say, generally speaking, I recommend and I carry my OC spray with my strong side hand so that my, my strong side hand is what I drop things out of when I go to get my gun if I need to. Not a big deal, but a little something that I did. Wood also recognized he started getting him and even though the guy turned away, he had enough of the respiratory effect and enough of the effect on him in order to diminish this guy. That's what a good OC spray should do. That's why I carry palm. That's why I recommend it. But I also want you to notice, look at our guard who just crossed over where he just sprayed and you can see him grabbing at his eyes because he's gotten a secondary exposure. One of the things that we see from this look like to me a, a cone or a fogger OC that he's got um, and one of the things with that is it does leave a big cloud and you got to recognize that if you're walking forward, you're going to walk into the cloud or you walk through that cloud, you're going to get a secondary exposure. So that's why if you use those kinds of OC, you want to use it and then take a couple steps back because you really don't want that kind of secondary exposure because it's stinking miserable. Now, they did get these guys away and the other guy's like, no, I don't want to go anywhere. So he uses a little bit of physical force there and pushes that guy away before he thinks about actually grabbing a hold of him or whatever. So when he pushes that second guy away, it's the first guy that, that's walking it off a little bit that, that is going, but it's the second guy that he pushed who actually pulls the knife. So you recognize that he pulls the knife on this guy. This guy has not been sprayed directly in the face. It's the other guy who's been sprayed directly in the face. So now you've got a deadly threat here. One of the values of OC spray is it will diminish somebody, but you better recognize that there's a time to go from a your less lethal tool to a more definitive tool like a firearm. And this is it. Dude draws a knife on you and says, oh, okay, I'm going to kill you. Well, now's the time it's not appropriate for OC spray anymore. And our guy gets his gun out and gets it up and on target. Now, I would also recommend, he's got a little bit of space here and a little bit of time and he knows that. This is a great reason to use a low ready position because number one, there is somebody in between you and that threat that you don't want to point a gun at. And that threat is moving a whole bunch and so you don't want to point a gun at anything you do not want to shoot right now, which is why a lot of times we will train from a low ready position. It's very fast if you train it right and it keeps you from pointing a gun at somebody that doesn't need to be immediately shot. And I think that is very smart. So learn to use that low ready position. Now this guy is a ways off of him and his girl is gonna push him away and so that's a very good thing. Now this other guy is the guy that they sprayed already and I want you to recognize, while he is not completely you know, on the ground in tears, he's diminished a little bit, he's not super happy about that. You can see him rubbing at his eyes and his face, but he's not a deadly threat, he is still a physical threat. So that's why our guard's like, hey man, you gotta get the heck out of here and tells his other guy, hey, if that guy comes our way, I need you to be willing to tase him in that moment and get after him. So, so one of the things that we see with those C sprays, this guy is diminished a little bit, but he's not heavily affected. And we see that about maybe 10% of the time, somebody will get a little bit diminished, but they're not gonna be completely knocked out by the hot sauce. It does happen. You know, somewhere 10% of people that we see when we do exposures in, in classes and stuff do, doesn't have incredible amounts of effect. And that's just life and, and the reality of things. So recognize that that may be the case for you, but it still was effective enough to diminish and to make the guy go, okay, I don't really wanna fight you and get the heck out of there. So last thing here is that our guard noticed that he actually had the gun in his right hand and now transitioned it back to his left hand to put it in the holster. I don't know if that's an issued gear problem or what, but carry the gun on the strong side that you wanna, you, you know, your better hand with the gun. Don't be transitioning the gun back and forth hand to hand because that's a bad way to, in order to have to do that in order to use the firearm accurately. So I think this is a great video to talk to us about when to use our hot sauce, when to use the OC spray, when to transition to the firearm and the effect of OC spray. It can be very effective and it did a fine job here, but recognize that every once in a while you're going to run into somebody who it doesn't just absolutely send them running off. And in that case, you need to have another answer and continue to cover your ASP.